Matheson. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 882. Hello, this is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth. Located somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Today it's the return of the much loved segment into an interview. And Mike on Mobile, where I go on location to talk to the amazing bass heavy, instrumental, heavy rock San Francisco band called the Illogistical. Mike's Daily Podcast. That's not the, all their name. The Illogistical Resource Department. Yes, it's a mouthful. Mike's Daily Podcast. I've come to the realization that when it comes to transportation in a big city, though it may be a break with tradition, I prefer the bus to the streetcar situation. Yeah, I know buses burn gas, but damn if they're way more fast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Streetcars in the city stop over and over and over again and only move a little bitty. Mike's. A bus can zoom Daily. around things. Podcast. And bus drivers talk to you. Yeah. And act like Uber drivers but operate a larger vehicle. And oh yeah, they actually went through training. And I trust them. And they're not annoying Uber hipster driver people. Look who just walked in. Hi, Mike. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. Hi, yeah. Did the disgruntled fiddle player tell you what? What? I don't know what the hell an Uber is. I think that's what we used to call like the kids in school that we didn't like. We called them Ubers. You mean Goobers? Or was that a Google? No, a Google used to be at like what we would typically call as like a snot burger. Oh yeah, thanks for refreshing my memory. No problem. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mac. I'm a dude beyond the brewmaster. Brewmaster, I didn't mean to bring up the what a Google really means. That's okay, I wasn't listening. I'm so in love with Shelly Shuhart. Mm-hmm. Oh boy! Yeah, she's amazing, isn't she? And the two of you are the perfect combination because she makes the chicken pot pies in the chicken pot pie bar that's part of the gift shop. And you make the root beer here at Cafe Anyway, where nobody drinks your root beer because they're too busy drinking my Matthews Chinos. And the Mispressos. It's still not a good name for that. Uh, we'll come up with something. Mike, maybe you can have like a writing contest or something. That's a great idea. Let's do that. Why did you just play that organ music, disgruntled fiddle player, to make it sound like scary? Because that's the only thing I know. I'm also a disgruntled organ player, too. Oh, so talented. All right. Well, yeah. So I was trying to get home last night after interview. So the inter the into an interview slash Mike on mobile you're gonna hear today. I did with Dan uh, Menapachi. I almost said Dan Auerbach of uh, the what do you call him? Yeah, that that band. I I I went to meet him in Dogpatch in San Francisco, and it took me a while. It took me a while to get there because I took public transportation. And then coming back, it took me even longer because I took the stupid streetcar. I took the bus there and it was fast. It was quick. The streetcar took forever and people were coming from the Giants game. And it was just what I think they lost too, didn't they? The uh, black stripes, black, the black tees, the black... Keys, thank you. Oh my god, I do not know my hipster indie rock very well, do I? If I don't know what the Black Keys are, no, they're a great band. So, yes, and uh, the Illogistical Resource Department, also a great band. We'll be speaking to them momentarily. Mark, why don't you speak to them now? All right, all right, you just pushed me along there. That's fine. I gotta go. Bye, bye. I'm so pushy, but so much fun. Yeah, I love Benita so much, and I so don't trust Uber at all. A friend of my ex-wife's was in a car being driven by an Uber guy when uh, they got T-boned. And she got like a minor whiplash. You know what? My ex-wife, when I went, oh my gosh, I never take Uber. She goes, no, 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 Uber's great. I take it all the time. And you know what? I think that, well, you know, I'm I'm quite a bit older than my ex-wife. Probably why it didn't work out, the May-December thing, which I've discussed before. But... I think maybe it's my generation 
that is is still okay with public transportation on the whole but like the people younger who can afford it go with uber whenever they can forget taxis forget public transportation it's all about the uber if they can't drive their car so that's what i've discovered my observations which don't mean a thing but yes if what you would like to chime in about this do you have something to comment about it email me mike staley podcast at gmail.com we read your comments on the section emails from email and your calm and not so calm ments which you can also do that you can comment on the twitter you can follow me at mike talks and on facebook we are at facebook.com slash mike staley podcast Ooh, but really quick, let's do this. Mike Scavenger Hunt. You're going to hear in the into an interview, the Mike on mobile, the Matthews interviews, that I'll be, when I'm speaking to Dan Menapachi Auerbach, uh, you're going to, you're going to, I want to kind of give some hints, drop some hints, and not actually say where the place is that we are. I don't think I do anyway. Try and guess where we are, the name of the, I'll, I'll say what it is. It's a wine bar. I'll say that right. I think I also say it during the interview. But yeah, try and guess where, where it is. And uh, email me or comment. And if you get it correct, I will send you this. Yuletide personalized MP3 for the contest. Yeah, I'll send you a Yuletide personalized MP3 for the. Yes, I know we're nowhere near Christmas. But uh, well, actually, we're kind of halfway to Christmas, aren't we? Just about. But you know what? I want to. G- all the characters from Cafe Anyway are going to send you a personalized greeting if you get it correct. So email me or comment Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com or on the Twitter at Mike Talks or Facebook, Facebook.com slash Mike's Daily Podcast. We read your comments on the section emails from email and your common, not so comments. And check out the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, with links to where to listen to this show in iTunes. And you can comment on the show and rate the show there. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. You can also hear us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, and America stream live and listen to my Mike Matthews morning show weekday mornings it's from a Connecticut radio station but you can hear it all over through tune in we have the link to that at mikesdailypodcast.com and also the link to the radio station you can hear me on with on the weekends on the country crossroads country internet radio station and tell your friends about this show through Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr, where you can find us at all those places. Also can be found at mikesdailypodcast.com. And finally, the other great way to help out the show is the Amazon link. If you're ever going to buy anything on Amazon, go through that link first at mikesdailypodcast.com, and we get some support from that. The blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews are at mikesdailypodcast.com. And speaking of interviews... Into interview and unt e mike on mobile it, it's mike on mobile mike matthews and into an interview i'm speaking with dan menapache or menape menapace menapace am i saying it right menapace right menapace he's the amazing bass player for the illog- Ill- illogistical resource department or the ird and Tell me now, your bass playing is amazing. I, did I just say that? I sent. I can't say it enough. You, when did you learn how to play the bass? Uh, I think I started when I was probably 25 or so, and I was doing it on and off for a few years, and really started a band, and we did it full time, maybe 20 years ago. Uh, oh. Seems like a long time now. What was the first band? We were called 13%, actually, after alcohol and wine, actually. <laughs> and we, oh, I should say, we're at a wine bar called Yield, and you're going to hear some traffic noise because we're right here on the corner of 22nd and 3rd? No. 3rd yeah. Third Street, yeah. And in fact, there goes the L or the K. Uh, I don't know, but there's, we're surrounded by Giants fans. It, oh, the T. That was the T. And we're in San Francisco, obviously, in the Dog Patch area. Do you have any idea why it's called Dog Patch, Dan? Hmm. No, I have no idea. But I know this area is changing a lot. It used to be pretty run down a few years ago. 
I might be distracted because there's very beautiful women walking by. So I will uh, try and be focused and do good journalism and interview you and talk about the logistical resource department, which leads us to the question, where did the name come from? Well, we started writing and uh, we were always writing stuff that seemed a little out in left field, I guess you'd say kind of uh, illogical so it was kind of like the place where illogical sounds derive from <laughs> so yeah that's how I kind of put it together like that have you always had mostly like in, it's mostly instrumental kind of uh, 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 why can't I think of his name um, uh, well I guess Primus but and, and Rush and, and you know just amazing bass uh, Chris Squire from Yes and 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 um his daughter's name Moon Unit. Frank Zappa. Frank Zappa, right, yeah. Our first album, yeah, it was pretty much all instrumental, just maybe just some spoken word here and there. But this new album, we wanted to do a little bit more vocals, so it turned out the first half of the album turned out to be all vocals, and the last second half was in, all instrumental. And we didn't even really plan it like that, it's just the way the song kind of flowed together. And it just turned out like that. So, yeah. who's singing? Um, I do some of the vocals, and uh, we got two guest singers. One singer from our last band was called Canetto, so we got him, a um, friend Forrest, to uh, sing on an old song that we re-recorded. Uh, and uh, another guy, Michael Wishman, who uh, sang with me on a song, "The Great Conspirator." So we kind of. Um, you can hear me on this, the left and right sides and him in the middle. So, uh, yeah, I did kind of a chorus thing. <laughs> uh, so, playing around with stereo effects and... Yeah, I do that a lot. So, since I recorded and mixed and mastered and everything, I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist, you know? So, I, uh, yeah, I love doing a lot of stereo effects and whatever fits the song, but, yeah... And you're recording at home, or um, we recorded the drums at our rehearsal space in Burlingame, oh. and um, everything else was at my home studio. We had a guitars, bass, vocals were all run um, through uh, preamps and stuff going direct. We did also do some guitars at the uh, at our rehearsal space too. Oh. That they need to be you know mic'd guitars and stuff like that. So, yeah. And that was that Pro Tools. Um, I use uh, Cakewalk Sonar. Um, yeah. So, but it's basically the same. It's pretty close to the same as Pro Tools, you know. So, I, I've worked with Pro Tools. I have no idea what Cakewalk Sonar is. Is that they, come with uh, like? They, they're more. Uh, they're PC based. Oh. Okay. So they're. They've been around a long time, and they've been always on the forefront of like technology. Yeah. So I always stuck with them. I actually did was teaching sonar instruction oh. when I first moved here to uh, making house calls and and fixing people's computers and uh, getting them set up for audio. So yeah, I've been using that ever since Windows 2000 came out. So 1999, probably oh. I've been on that. So and now Windows 10. Are you excited about that? Yeah, I'm actually beta testing it right now oh yeah so How, how's it where is it is it messing up the is the cakewalk sonar messing up with it or are they compatible yeah it's fully compatible so far i mean some of the drivers that hardware drivers from some of the audio gear isn't ready yet but each each new build that they make just keeps getting better and better it's it's almost ready for release release actually it's supposed to be out the end of july i think so and where did you move here from? Um, from central New Jersey. So, I mean, I moved here in 95 and uh, wanted to come out here to start a band. And, uh, yeah, just there was, it wasn't much work back there at the time. So moved out here and got, got a job and got a band going. And I was also uh, a snowboarder, competing in snowboarding. Wow. So I was, I was always coming out here to Tahoe every year to compete and just ride with my friends so I was, it seemed like a natural thing to do just move out here so. oh my gosh do you still snowboard yeah i've snowboarded every single year since 1981 wow <laughs> so i'm a is that when they invented it because you know last time i skied was probably 80 
six or something. Or eighty. It's been a while. So I, I didn't never tried snowboarding. I have no idea what it's like. It was actually invented probably in the late seventies or so. Huh. Uh, they didn't. They didn't call it snowboarding. It was just going down on a plank with a <laughs> rope on the front. But yeah, uh, pretty much. The first commercial boards were around 81, 82 or so. Okay. Yeah. But they didn't even allow them anywhere, any ski areas for a while. So we would just hike up the golf courses whenever it snowed, you know, and just ride or get pulled by a truck or something. <laughs> you would ski or snowboard being pulled by a truck on the ice? Um, or actually when, it was, when it snowed, you know, we'd get some snow. We'd just get pulled around like grass fields and stuff, you know. <laughs> It was, kind oh. of like, uh, it was kind of like water skiing on a snowboard, yeah. Oh, my gosh, Dan. <laughs> wow, you are fearless. <laughs> yeah, it's, I always had that in me, you know. It's in my blood, you know. So, yeah. And, and I, would say that's in your, I would say that's in your music, too. Like, I was going to play March of the Urchins, which is the first cut, isn't it? Yeah, that's the first cut, yeah. Um, yeah, it turned out to be just that first bass riff that comes in. Everything was just written around that, you know. I, I just started jamming that, and Noah came in with the big toms, and then uh, then Jim came in with that the guitar doing the same thing. It was kind of a, turned into a march, you know. And that's Noah Oz and Jim Harris. Right. Yeah. Really dark Who's doing the transmission, radio transmission in the background? Oh, that's actually Michael Wishman too. He's he was actually doing like a a roving news reporter style, and it was based on um, an article I read about these uh, urchins in Southern California that were eating all the kelp, and all the kelp forests were just like being wiped clean by these urchins. And it was I thought it was a pretty cool story. So. He just kind of improved and did this uh, <laughs> roving news reporter kind of <laughs> piece over top of the, the song, and it, it fit totally. So, we kept have you it. ever eaten urchins? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not a big seafood eater, but are they any good? I don't. I haven't either. But I think I saw them cook it on chopped, which is funny that I mentioned that because I was just telling you about a recent podcast where I complained about the Food Network having nothing but game shows now. But I am hooked on Chopped, which is a show on there. As the T goes by going the other direction, the T train. Let's play March of the Urchins. And it is Illogistical Resource Department Dan Menapace here on Mike's Daily Podcast.
<laughs> that would be the March of the Urchins as we go outside of Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley. Tomorrow, part two of my Into an Interview and Mike on Mobile Matthews interviews with the Illogical Resource Department and Dan Menapace. And here's today's podcast picture. You can see a picture of Dan Menapace right now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Oh, gosh. Don't you love how in that interview you can hear the sound of the streetcars that I was complaining about at the beginning of the show just whirring by? That's awesome. Try and guess what it is. You might win a Yuletide personalized MP3 for thee. Although it won't really be a Yuletide one. It'll just be a greeting from all the... Cafe characters, all the podcast players here at Cafe Anyway. So, usually one of the cafe characters talks right here. The podcast players. None of them are talking. Brewmaster? Yeah, I like being outside. Uh huh. The scrum fiddle player? Yeah, okay. I hate all playing all instruments, bass, everything. I'm the disgruntled bass player, too. But I am floored by Dan. Menapace. Yeah, Dan Menapace is amazing. Uh, 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 he's a, a surfboard. No, wait. Snowboarder. He's everything. Benita, isn't that impressive? Yeah! Great. Next show, part two of my Into an Interview with Dan Menapace of the band The Logistical Resource Department from San Francisco. Plus, we'll hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Ben. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.